In today's Private Market Poll snapshot, the one thing I'm focused on is this. Whether the recent easing by the Federal Reserve can bring a revival to the commercial real estate market. Private real estate has been the clear laggard within the private markets over the last couple of years, with real estate funds performance declining by more than 18% since June of 2022. But fast forward to today, and the CRE market may be nearing an inflection point in terms of price appreciation and lower financing costs, but against still solid operating income fundamentals. So first of all, the Fed is now firmly in easing mode, and this historically bodes well for commercial real estate. Looking at the data outside of the 2007 global financial crisis, typically when the Fed enters a cutting cycle, CRE prices, in this case proxied by Encrief Property Index, rise by 7% over the following year. The levered private CRE funds proxied by Encrief ODCE Index also typically see an average return of 7% during that time period. Indeed, year-over-year change in property prices troughed back in the third quarter of last year, 2023, and prices now showing signs of rebounding higher in the coming quarters. Lower rates can have a positive impact on property price appreciation, but secondly, and importantly, Fed easing also brings relief to borrowers with floating rate debt. This is because the key commercial real estate base rates, such as SOFR, tend to reset lower with Fed cuts. This is particularly good news this cycle, given the sharp rise in floating rate debt over the past two decades. Between 2004 and 2014, for example, only about 5% of commercial mortgage-backed securities, CMBS loans, were floating rate. But today, that number has jumped over fourfold to around 22%. That means that the pass-through from Fed cuts could be quicker and more impactful than the past. Now, one area that investors worried about is also this upcoming wall of CRE maturities in 2025 and 2026 and the decline in base rates should lessen those concerns too. In 2024, the average interest rate on newly originated CRE loan was 6.2%. That's about 190 basis points higher than that on the maturing loans. However, with further Fed rate cuts, the base rates could fall to around 4% in 2025 and closer to 3% by 2026, allowing the maturing loans to refinance at relatively lower yields assuming spreads also hold steady. So as the funding costs come in and both new financing and refinancing appears more attractive, lending activity should increase significantly. Indeed, today, when we look at the Mortgage Bankers Association data, we see a forecast of a 26% increase in CRE lending this year, climbing from $429 billion in 2023 to $539 billion in 2024. And still a further 23% increase is expected in 2025 to reach $665 billion. That is in line with pre-pandemic trend. Additionally, we're also seeing signs of revival in the CMBS market with third quarter issuance volumes among the strongest in the post-GFC era. Meanwhile, as the funding costs ease, aggregate CRE fundamentals remain solid. For instance, net operating income growth or NOI growth currently stands around 3%, which is in line with historical averages and slightly above inflation. Vacancies outside of the office sector are low, and that is what's supporting this rent growth. Indeed, NOI growth is forecasted to actually re-accelerate to between 4.5% to 7.5% in the coming years. So where does that leave us? Well, lower rates and solid fundamentals certainly warrant this renewed sense of enthusiasm and optimism about the commercial real estate market as funding costs ease, deal activity picks up, and prices stabilize. And I also think that given the reset in CRE prices of the past two years, which has left the commercial property prices significantly down since their 2022 highs, this is the right moment to opportunistically add back to this important $20 trillion asset class. And that's your one thing in private markets this week.